We ended up coming into an existing space that was being used for cut flowers. A lot of pests were here when we arrived. And uh, ideally you want to get to the point where sprays become pretty much unnecessary and that can be done, it's a combination of a handful of different things. First, in my mind being cleanliness, keeping everything, uh, you know, keeping your, your environment clean. Uh, it's kind of the first step to that and uh, the health of the plants. Uh, strong, healthy plants with, uh, with high bricks levels don't tend to attract pests. Um, nutrition has an effect. Uh, if there's, um, th there are specific triggers that will uh, send out signals basically for pests, uh, kind of like ringing a dinner bell. Uh, so you can actually draw them in based on what you're doing. Uh, if they are here, pre-existing, and, uh, and trying to get rid of them, um, spraying becomes one of the options that you can consider, depending on the level of the outbreak, uh, the conditions that you're working in, and the choice of things to spray. Uh, <laughs> one, one of the reasons that the industry is going to be subject to uh, such a such strict, strict regulations is um, the absence of those regulations has led to the use of a lot of things that are not safe, uh, ornamental, um, and you're seeing a, a lot of a lot of people, especially this last year with that the, some of the lawsuits that have been going around. Um, a lot of that surrounding the use of things that are not registered for this particular use. They're not registered to be used on anything that's going to be consumed. Um, they are uh, ornamental only. The, the choice of things to spray that are safe for um, safe for the considering where the plants going to be and the plants going to end up being consumed. Um, adding flame to that even changes the game once again because uh, Introducing some of this, some of the stuff that is used and, and considered organic for um, for fruit and berry and stuff like that production. When you burn it, it changes um, ch changes the consistency of it uh, to where it can become uh, harmful to human health. I guess would be toxic. It can become toxic. Uh, so the the choice of things to spray. Uh, yeah, everything from horticultural oils to just straight poisons. I tend to gravitate towards the horticultural oils. They have, um, in addition to whatever kill rate the substance itself might have, uh, there's a smothering effect as well. A lot of things, you know, mites and things like that can be easily smothered. Uh, if you add any sort of, put any sort of oil or anything on powdery mildew, you'll see it just, the powdery mildew falls apart. Um, so I, I tend to lean towards things that are a little bit more based on horticultural oils than chemicals. Uh, one example would be uh, Las Coast plant therapy. We've been using this one for uh, a few months now and it's been working very well. It's easy to use, it's effective, and it's non-toxic. It's uh, completely safe to be in contact with it. You don't have to get all dressed up. This is uh, peppermint and soybean oil, primarily. Peppermint oil, soybean, citric acid. The biggest challenge with a lot of these things um, and how effective they're gonna be is determined by coverage. Uh, how efficient you're able to, to distribute this across the plant material or over the plant material. Uh, things like backpack sprayers can be really inefficient for even coverage uh, in, in an enclosed space like this. Ideal in my mind is to be able to use a fog. One of the ways that you can do that or, or one of the ways you can get close to doing that that's still a little bit more of a kind of hobbyist or gardener, gardener level, um, not necessarily a commercial level solution, is these atomizers, um, which of course you see at all the hydro stores. 
a little bit more effective, I feel, except for the, the spray is all coming out in a direction. Um, these things are spitting out a stream, a jet. It uh, doesn't, really, doesn't really stay suspended long enough for the air to kind of move that around and, um, and fog everything out. With the, with, the, with the fogger, the idea would be that you're, you're kind of gassing everything almost. Uh, your, your coverage ends up being a lot more, um, uh, a lot more even and lighter. You can go through a lot less material as well, not have to spray anywhere near as much in order for it to be effective. Uh, ideally, I'd like, like to be able to um, wait till the end of the day and come in and shut everything down and gas the whole house and then come in in the morning, open it up and be using something um, that's, uh, that's soft enough that you don't necessarily have an issue with people walking right back into the greenhouse and horticultural oils are kind of a nice, soft choice for that. So yeah, this is basically just shooting out in one direction. And you'll see, the, see how it's already getting dark underneath it. See how it's all dropping to the ground? Uh, right here? Yeah. Oh yeah, right there, yeah. So you have that spot directly underneath where you're spraying where the majority of the material just kind of fell to the ground. And you can see while I'm doing that, that it comes out uh, just a little bit finer than a backpack sprayer. But underneath where you're spraying, you're seeing this whole wet spot. Right. So all that material is getting shot out, but then the majority of it is kind of coming to the ground really fast. Um, ideal would be to have all of that stuff stay suspended to where the circulation, the air circulation can push that around and we end up with coverage in spots that you wouldn't be able to hit directly. So instead of coming in and you know trying to get up underneath a plant and spray the underside of every leaf, which is for, for your coverage, for efficiency of the product you're using is, is a factor. I mean, you, you would make it a lot more efficient um, or the, the, the coverage is kind of the efficiency of it. Uh, so to be able to take that and put it in a little bit finer uh, particle to where our air circulation would push that stuff around in here and stay suspended in the air for a while means that you would have a lot more thorough coverage. Well, so I was going to ask, does that imply that a fogger creates finer particles than an atomizer can? Um, it's, that's my understanding of them, yeah, is that a, a, a fogger is producing a finer particle um, that's able to stay suspended longer. Got it. So who, who is Fogger do we want to try out? Um, Dram is the one that we've been looking at the most right now. Uh, they make two products. They make a, a Pulse Fog, which comes in two versions. One of them lends itself to organics. The other one is uh, a little bit easier to use with chemicals. Okay. Uh, and then the Cold Fogger, which is based on pressure. 